All right, we're recording. I never know when this thing starts. It always yeah. starts. Hello, Michael, <laughs> take it away. Let's do it. Let's do some nosebleeder sports, New York sports, opening baseball weekend. <laughs> Fuck yeah. You're a Yankee fan. If you're not, well, womp womp, buddy. Womp womp. 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 To all my Mets fan friends. Mike, what do you want to talk about? Take it away, buddy. Today is Easter. And while most of us were searching for eggs, the New York Mets were searching for victories and hits. <laughs> that's, my, that's my old news reporter wit right there. That's how we're starting. That's and guess what? Uh, they still have not found any eggs, uh, from what I Nothing. understand. Big zeros. So I watched. I was with family today. Um, mm -hmm. I saw the beginning of the Yankee game. We'll talk about the Yankees in a minute. Let's quickly... I'll, I'll, here's my opinion on the Mets is what I've seen because okay. the Mets were on most of the day. At, I was at my brother's house. So the Mets, I, I caught it in the bottom of the fifth inning. The Mets are up, and it was either the bottom of the fifth, bottom of the sixth, and Brandon Nimmo swings on the first pitch and lines out to, like, the second baseman or something like that. Guys are, like, one, two in the count the whole time. They don't build rallies. They don't work the count. They're just like free swinging up there. And if you, they were down 3 1 at one point, it was still a very, you know, you could still come back from that. And then it became 4 1. But like, they don't, you got to work in the middle of the game. I don't know if it was Milwaukee's starting pitcher or the relief pitcher, but like, you've got to work the count. You've got to tire those guys out. You got to, if you're going to build a rally, start with that, work the count, make it interesting. They're just free swinging, bounce, like they don't care. Oh, I'm out, you know, and it's like, that's why you're losing. Your approach to the plate is just completely wrong. Yeah, the so. Mets really – look, on my prediction episode last week, I had them finishing in last in the East, and <laughs> I just... still have them finishing in last in the East because Milwaukee is a okay to slightly below average team at this point in time, yeah. and they made them look fucking silly. This yeah. is a situation where the Mets are bad. They're just bad. There's no other way to say they've got some individual pieces that are good. Like Lindor is pretty good. Singh is pretty good. A couple other guys, Nimmo. But overall, this is a bad team. And they're the going to look hit. bad the whole year. It's going to be a situation where, um, you know, if you want to go watch a Mets game, we're going to be able to sit in them sweet, sweet luxury boxes in the second level and the low level for like 20 bucks this year. Yeah. I, I just – that just drives me that like the modern approach to hitting is – it, like at some point the league went backwards. Like nobody hits for average anymore. It's just the home runs. And it looks like that's what the Mets are trying to do. They had no patience at the plate where the opposite, the Yankees who only know how to win games by hitting home runs have completely changed their approach. They're working counts. They're walking. Guys are walking. And it has a lot to do with Let's Juan Soto. Get to the Yankees in a minute. Cause you yeah. and I are both Yankee fans. We have yeah. a lot to say. But, yeah, as far as the Mets go, they just – look, man, they don't have the talent on their roster. <laughs> well, they – yeah, they do. They, no, they're, I'm sorry. They're they growing this team. Yeah, they're growing this team. It's going to be another two seasons. When you look at the roster construction of that team yeah. and you compare it to either the Phillies or the Braves, they're not no. even in the same stratosphere. No, no. And you they, could, and like I said, you can make the case that if some of those Nationals prospects arrive ahead of schedule, they're finishing last this year. I'm sticking with my prediction. Yeah. Especially after what we just saw that what's the guy, Reese Hoskins, who's a cast off from the Phillies, personally <laughs> curve stomped the Mets this weekend. Oh, Unbelievable. It, it, it that whole thing with the slide was like I, I was kind of shocked of how what was it, Lindor? Who who I don't see who it was who reacted, but so, whoever got in his oh, face. Shortstop or second base. The slide yeah. was like he kind of took him out, but I think it was a legal slide, and it seemed like a really big overreaction to the whole thing. And yeah, Reese Hoskins just embarrassed them. And it was like, you know, just go beat these guys at the plate. You're supposed to be good. McNeil's supposed to be a great hitter. Alonzo's a great hitter. That, that You can't win games by swinging at the first pitch and lining out to the second baseman. It's just dumb. <laughs> it's just, it is bad fundamentals, gonna, man. Just get prepared to go to the mall when they build the mall. <laughs> oh, dude, it's going to be sick what they're building the parking lot there. But it's going to be soccer a few games. More years. The Mets you know, are just kind of like hanging out. We'll, we'll and hey, you know what? Daddy Daddy Cohen is gonna will eventually put money into this team, but this ain't the year. It just ain't the year. Because no, they're still remember, they're still paying for that Scherzer contract, too. Yeah. And I think it's they might be, be paying a part of Verlander too. It's gonna be rough for them. Uh all right, moving along. Years. Let's talk about 
Los Yankees. Yankees. We got to talk about it, buddy. This is, in my opinion, the the best weekend this team has had in years. Years. Honestly. Years. years. This remind, and I know it's only March. It's not even April. You always say it's only April. It's literally not even April it's yet. Not even April till tomorrow. And this <laughs> reminds me a lot of. Do you remember the weekend in two thousand and six where the Yankees beat the Red Sox five games back to back to back to back to back? No. Do you remember that to back? Um, they swept Not the really Red yet. Sox in Fenway Park five games in a row. And it, right. it was in August, and it essentially knocked the Red Sox out of division contention because it was like the end of August. And they went from like a game or two to like seven games back in like a weekend. Oh, maybe. And it felt like that because – you're, 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 again, we're, we're, the Yankees didn't knock the Astros out this past weekend. No. But after what the Yankees went through with the Red Sox in the mid 2000s, and after what the Yankees w- have been going through with the Astros since the late uh, 2010s, yeah, it felt so good to watch a couple of new guys essentially, and in, in, in not really as much Cabrera, but Soto, Cabrera, and and even Verdugo to a lesser extent, just walk into their house. And just make them look stupid for four games straight. And and again, none of the games were blowouts. But when yeah. they had to make a pitch, when they had to make a play, when they, they had to through. hit a single, they, they did. came through. They, the the first game, I was already complaining, of course, because we're Yankee fans. Like they of started off the first half of that game looking like last year's Yankees of like, here we go, we can't hit with runners in scoring position, and that's how it was. And then they rallied back on some walks, and Astros played terrible defense, and just really. Blew the game. That one guy, um, I forget what it was Alvarez. He he turned the wrong way after you know when you overrun first. And technically, good heads up by Rizzo tagged yeah. him out. That was a bonehead play by Alvarez. But like Soto with the throw, the I call it the throto from Soto. <laughs> he I hate they it. got the they got the guy out at home. It's yeah. just a whole new energy. And and he is on. He's playing way better than Judge. First of all, I'm so glad that I got him first round of my fantasy team. Yeah. But that's just an aside. But the thing that Soto does yeah. that this team didn't do all of last year, he hits singles. Yeah, he, just get on base, just swing the bat. That's what John and Susan always say. All that's what, you yeah. need to do just get singles. Is, his first hit as a Yankee was a single with the bases loaded. He didn't get up there like a rod or like Stanton and swing for the fences and strike out on three pitches that were down in a way that you weren't going to hit anyway. No, nope. he got up there, he worked the count, and he just hit a nice clean line drive base hit. So hit that right there, and today to finish to to essentially cap the sweep, he did the yeah. same thing. He worked the count. Yep. He took what the pitcher gave him. He went the other way. He hit one to left field. And it played We're a run. The, the situational yeah. hitting and the awareness that he's had is, first of all, his baseball IQ is off the charts, just yeah. in, in how he, his approach. But yeah. he does. He he again. He he doesn't look dumb when he's up there. And it, no. I'm glad we have him because I don't know if you saw the weekend that Judge and Stanton just had. Outside of the one blast by Stanton that was in garbage time when they were up by seven to one or something anyway. <laughs> That's and outside of a yeah. sack fly that Judge had, they look completely lost at the plate. Oh yeah. So the fact oh, that yeah. you have you had uh Cur- the Wizard of Oswaldo, whatever they're calling him now. You had him step it up. He's okay. better than nine hundred. <laughs> and you had and you had um yeah you had Soto step it up. He kind of you can make the case that without Soto they lose all four of these games. Oh totally. And, Absolutely. and not to focus on the negatives, but we, we do got to talk about. Here's the thing, I mentioned on the show last week. Yeah. The Astros are no longer the best team in the West. No. They're not. And no. I honestly don't even know if they're barely top three-ish, top four-ish in the AL anymore. There are finally, after years of them dominating this league, there yeah. are finally chinks in the armor. They're finally yeah. finding holes in some of these guys' swings, and their bullpen is flat-out bad. Okay, yeah. The Yankees just swept them four games in a row. In three of those games, we saw Presley and Hayter. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And they rallied and beat the bullpen. Yeah, That's what you looks, looked good. Don't get me wrong. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, today I think they wore them out because they used them two days in a row. But their middle relief that the Houston has is trash. No, they're they're going to have to acquire right like two to three to four arms at the deadline just to shore that up. And that's assuming they even get that far. Because right now they're 0-4. Um, yeah. And the and, one guy and, suspended from the ALCS, so they didn't have him. No, I, I think he served it. Right? I think he served it in the first game or two, and then he came in today. I, I don't actually – yeah, I don't yeah. Even know about that. Yeah. But it, it, the fact is, by the time Verlander gets back in a few months, 
I mean, who knows? Maybe it's too late for that team. And God bless them. I hope it is. I, I hope <laughs> that, that, look, I, I've never, look, I know it's our divisional rival, but I hope Toronto goes in there and also sweeps them and just puts them behind the eight ball that to would begin be the season to the point where, you know, it, it, just, it starts it casting doubts in their head of, oh, this dynasty air quotes on the dynasty because it's it's starting know, to fizzle yeah the, the the alcs dynasty whatever you want to call it it's finally fading away and yeah. it's going to be great in a couple of years when we get to just make fun of them for the fact that you know they have one possibly legitimate championship a cheating championship and then a bunch of just playoff appearances long, yeah long. like the braves of the 90s the so only one all that winning and only one world series to, to be to fair the, to the astros yeah. they made it past the first round which the, the braves often didn't but you yeah. know yeah. um but yeah I, I would say that this is is it a function of the yankees performing great or is it a function of the fact that the astros are finally falling off well i think it's it's definitely both but i think it's definitely with soto adds I mean, he's very animated at the plate. You know, I could see how like, he's shaking his head no when it's a ball to the pitcher and he does the shimmy mm-hmm. and all that. And I could see how that can rub guys the wrong way, especially if you're not a Yankee fan. But, like, he's such high energy and such enthusiasm. And, you know, everybody was like, is he going to want to stay here? Is he going to like it here? He's, he's having a ball right now. So first four games. And, yeah, look, small start. sample size. Granted, yeah. I mean, look, in a couple months when he goes through a, you know, 0 for 11 stretch or whatever he goes through and the Yankees right. lose three in a row and, uh, you know, whatever the case is, they're seven behind the Orioles. Yeah, then we can yeah. panic and get angry. But right now, I just, and look, there are negatives to talk about with this series, but I do want to ride this high for at least a day or two. Because who knows? The Diamond no, you gotta enjoy the wins. the Yankees this week. You got to enjoy the wins, especially against a team yeah. that's tortured you, especially against an entire fan base that a lot of them still act like they never cheated, which is the funniest thing to do when you see these color yeah. L2 they never cheated. It's like, no, no they, they did. did. They did and piss off. But the Yankees were caught but cheating. The Yankees with also, and stuff. No, they didn't. Yeah. Shut up, bitch. Yeah, right, they, like, I mean the Yankees, we know they had players doing steroids, so you know, just own it and get over yourself. Yeah, you know, no, like, be be like A Rod, who said, you know, yeah. I got suspended for two years, but I deserved it. Don't do all this pussy shit of like, oh, but the Yankees of the Apple Watch and fucking jerk me off or you bunch of cunts. But fucking an entire state of people that uh, started watching baseball nine years ago. I know. You know, a a bunch of of high school football fans are going to tell me about cheating in baseball. Yeah, are there any Mike Scott, Nolan Ryan era fans left? Now, can we talk about the (laughs) negatives? We got to talk about the negatives. Uh, The uniforms are trash. Oh, the uniforms are terrible. Uh, Clay Holmes looked shaky as fuck in two of his three appearances this weekend. I yeah. mean, John Birdie saved his skin, saved his ass with that play at the end of the game. I don't know if you were watching. Oh. But, and also, Soto Dude. saved his ass in the first game. This could have been a split or, we, you know, this game was – this series was very close to being in the other direction. I think a lot of people – we need to focus on that. Other than the game in which the Astros' defense fell apart, these were very, very close games in which – a one bad game. pitch, yeah. the game could have gone in any other direction. So I yeah. have to say that, yes, it's fun, but you can't dance on the Astros' grave quite yet because it's still March. Yeah. It's fun that they beat them in their own house. It's fun mm-hmm. they put them 0-4, but it's a very long season. Holmes looks shaky. Judge looks lost. Stanton looks lost. Yeah. Um, um, there are things to be a little bit concerned about. Yeah, I like Glaber got a hit at the end today because last year he didn't have the typical Glaber season and everybody was looking to trade him. So I like the I like him in the leadoff spot. I'll say that. I'm enjoying that. I well, LeMahieu's out. Yeah, and that's why. And and that's why Oswaldo's playing. And they're saying Oswaldo put in the work in the offseason. And like Susan Waldman was saying on the radio, she's like, he, she was going to interview him for the pregame interview. And he's like, can we wait like five minutes? I want to go watch Soto in the cage because he's trying to learn. He's like, he's like Soto's shadow right now. So. I'm like, yeah, whatever you gotta do. Hey, that that's a (laughs) good that's a good guy to learn from. I mean, Soto is one of the best players of all time. And look, I'll be honest with you, I didn't really watch him a whole lot when he was at the Nationals until he was in the World Series against the Astros. He played for the Padres after, and look, it East Coast fans, unless you're really, really dedicated, it's hard to watch a West Coast game sometimes because they start at like 10 o'clock at night. I'm usually up late, so I'll sometimes I'll put a game on. This, but yeah, most like... fans really don't know what they're in for with Soto. You can look at the numbers and all that, no, but great. now that I'm actually seeing it, to where he's in every at bat, he's in every pitch, 
Okay, and he can turn the game around just by, you know, with his He's bat in a matter of seconds. It's unbelievable. We haven't had a, a player this good, and, and, you know, no disrespect to guys like Judge. We haven't had a, a, a generational talent on this team in, in so long. This is like, so refreshing to watch. Yeah, it, it, you have Jeter, of course. You have Mariano, obviously. We have Clemens. It's been a, you know, it's been a but, decade. But, like, Mattingly, maybe before that, you know. It's, yeah. And before, and yeah, like, you know, uh, yeah, it's sometimes hard to admit how good a guy is in New York because it's we deal with the the negativity so much, and it's like, why can't our stars be good like the other stars? So we finally have one of the top talents in the league, and they're playing like it, yeah. And Soto Soto is younger than O'Neill Cruz on the Pirates. He's twenty three right. years old. He started at nineteen. He has his whole career ahead of him still, and he's, he's going to get 50, he's gonna be a fifty plus million a year. But that's that that's we'll talk about that in uh, November. Yeah. Let, let's get to the uniform thing you wanted to talk about. Yeah, so I'm going to bring first this up of all. Right if away. you're doing the audio version, which by the way, not many people have been doing the audio version. The few listeners yeah. we do get are on the YouTube, which is where we want them. Thank you. Yeah. We got to talk about these uniforms, Mike. Uh, give me this your give me your is, best description of this. This is ridiculous. This, this is what appears. I think is Rodon. I can't tell who's. I can't yeah, I, I, think I think it's Rodon. This is like after like two pitches. <laughs> it looks like he jumped in the pool. The uh, let me the away uniforms look great with the new uh, uh, going back to the retro New York without the. White I actually piping. I like the look, but I don't yeah. like the fabric. Is that kind of fair? The best way. That's to say what it? it is, and 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 it's their uniforms are completely gray. There's no piping, so when they're wet, it looks like they're wearing like like wet gym clothes or wet. Spandex leotard. Yeah. It just it looks ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, no, it does look like someone just walked up to Carlos Rodon and just uh, poured an entire five gallon bucket of water on him. And I did notice yeah. this when I was watching the game that it really is. It's like embarrassing. You know, this fanatics, these fanatics uniforms. I will be shocked if they make it to the All Star break because I know for yeah. a fact that the players are really upset about this. The players and are that upset players about. Players union them. is quite strong. I will tell you. Yeah. Um, this is another one. This looks. I don't know who this is. Judge. Kind of, I think it's Judge. Judge. Yeah, is it? Is it okay, it looks like Judge. Looks and like then look at the yeah. armpit sweat. Oh wow! I don't know who I'm pitching here. <laughs> this is ridiculous. See, I, almost, <laughs> I, I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist, but I almost oh, feel like did they man. make the uniforms thinner so they can cut them and stick them in baseball cards? Because that's what fanatics they own tops and they make all these. You get a card with a piece oh, of the I see plate. What you're it, saying. Yeah, like I, that wouldn't surprise or, me. Right? Or it's a That's conspiracy true. from um, they're they're, they're co-sponsored by Old Spice. They want to sell more antiperspirant <laughs> to the players. That's well, you know they, they want to get some endorsement deals with Old Spice and Right Guard and shit. I, I, this well, looks we, so terrible. Yeah. This picture on the screen. <laughs> well, you know, you know the Seinfeld episode where where George is going to Tartable saying, "What are you wearing?" And he's like polyester, and he's like, "It's hot in this uniform." So that, growing up, the players always wore polyester uniforms after they got rid of the cotton uniforms. And then they came out, I don't know how many years back at this point, maybe 10 years back, they came out with these this dry technology that it's supposed to absorb the sweat and stay dry. And I had Well, it clearly does absorb the sweat. It does that part pretty well. Yeah, well, but I, well. Had a, I had a Majestics Yankees, like, you know, like the navy blue spring training jersey, and it had that tech dry technology, and, like, it didn't really get wet. This is like a friggin' washcloth. It's not. It's not, Dude, it's, not I, suppo- it's supposed to be dry. I gotta tell you that I think the dry technology is bullshit because I, I go jogging a lot. I go jogging yeah. around, and uh, I bought. I had like a Nike dry fit shirt that was kind of expensive. Dry and, fit. Uh, That's what it, it is. It kind of yeah. sucked. And then I bought like the Hanes knockoff, and it was just as good, if not better. And I don't. I'm right. not being paid by Hanes to say that, even though I no. am a homer for them. But it is. Um, this whole thing with the technology and the pro whatever it's bullshit. <laughs> well, it's, it's bullshit. And here. These guys are big motherfuckers. Okay. They, these guys were all huge and they all sweat yeah. a lot. Now, part of this might be because they were in Texas, but also the roof is closed, I think for all four of these games. So mm-hmm. I really, really think that this is only going to last two or three months tops. And they're, and they're gray uniforms. I'd like to see how the home uniforms look. The Astros mainly wore blue in this series. I they had really different ones this. every game. They had different ones yeah. every game. I watched all four games. It was uh, it, it was They did the blue ones today. They did the, the stupid, obnoxious orange ones the other day, and yeah. they opened with the home whites. Oh, right, day. right. And the home whites were having the same problem the Yankees uniforms were having. It no. was... 
It was bad. These are this terrible. Is, these these are just is, trash. Um, and do, like they, I think we have we have a picture that sums up this series actually pretty well. Do we not? There we go. There it is. <laughs> this picture sums up the series. The Astros. Yes, <laughs> I think the Astros played very complacent this whole series. They thought, oh, it's the Yankees. We always beat them. We own And the them. Yankees yeah, yeah. showed up with a game plan. And yeah. the Yankees. Look, I will say this. Part of the reason the Yankees did so well is because right now every pitcher is only throwing 70 pitches if they're a starter, maybe 80 tops. Yeah. And so all they had to do is work the count, knock them out in the third or fourth, and beat the hell mm-hmm. out of the bullpen. If they do meet in the playoffs and you have a healthy Verlander who can throw you eight innings, it's a much harder equation. And yeah. so you, you can't get complacent or too cocky if you're a Yankee fan like we are. However, this picture sums it up. F this guy and is cheating. And I'm glad that he looked horrified by the fact that somebody threw him inside because he, he deserves to get busted off the plate once in a while, if you know what I mean. So, yeah. yeah. He, he, yeah. It's they funny. got ambushed. At, they one point, it. at one point, he was at first base standing next to Rizzo. And it, Rizzo's a tall guy, but he's not Aaron Judge tall. But, like, he was <laughs> tapping over Altuve. And they're, like, chit chat. And I'm like, don't talk to him. He's the enemy. But it's just, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not really a big Altuve guy. Good player, but the whole cheating he, thing is He just, works hitters counts better than almost anybody in the league. Like, yeah, he's a good hitter. To him, he knows what he is doing. Yeah. Um, that being said, the cheating scandal is going to be over his head for the rest of his career. And um, it's going to really bother me when he gets in the first ballot Hall of Fame. Uh, oh, like yeah. Other players have gotten the first ballot because they're not yeah. on the Yankees. But anyway, that, 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 that that's, you know, that's a whole other conversation. So... Do we have um, anything else with this series, or are we going to talk about? Um, no, we're going to move on to, to to the A's. You brought this to my attention right before. We got to talk about this. So in yeah. Oakland, mm-hmm. um, we've been covering this saga a little bit. We don't do it as in depth on this channel as other channels yeah. do, but there. Are, and you should go follow other channels that do it better. But I, uh, I'm more. I'm a fan of the sport first before I'm a fan of the Yanks, and you have to be. And what's happening in Oakland is a fucking travesty. It, it, it's it's a con. It's a con job that this stupid ownership group is doing. It's so the free. fans last year, after doing their reverse boycott where they sold out the stadium and chanted sell the team the whole game, which is funny. This year they did something which is even funnier. They Most of the fans refused. They showed up in the game and they did what's called a parking lot protest where they all went – parked in the parking lot and basically just tailgated for five hours and didn't actually go into the stadium. They just hung out and like watch the game on the parking lot and radios and all that. <laughs> and so put up, I don't know which image you have first, but we have, this one. so th- this is part of it. Uh, the cell flags and the cell shirts are kind of an iconic. I kind of want to get one, even though I'm not an yeah. A's fan, because I, I, I really, hat, yeah. really feel, what Oakland I hat. really feel that, <laughs> You know, it's such a bullshit con job, and they're getting something stolen from them that didn't deserve to get stolen. Um, yeah. So this is what they did. This is now out, clearly outside of the parking in the parking lot. That's outside the Coliseum there, and they're waving their cell flags, they're cheering, and they showed up, and they didn't spend a dime at the actual game, which I think is very funny that they did that. Because the actual stadium, do we have the stadium picture? Yeah, so we, we have, have the other parking lot one. I know we. This oh, the other yeah. parking lot so one. Yeah. Just to show you, like they weren't screwing around. I think that's a perform. No, that's a van. But I read somewhere they had like a performance stage set up, and they were doing, doing like beer like dancing outside the stadium and shit. Oh, okay. It was a whole thing, man. Um, and this is to show you, these are all people that are in the parking lot. They packed the parking lot. And yeah. didn't go in and spend money, which I think Amazing. is commendable. I think it's hilarious. I just I love how just agitating this fan because you know this owner is sitting there looking at this like fucking you know, these motherfuckers. I wish these fucking peasants and shut up. Yeah, he the thinks man, he's going to get a fan man. base in Vegas. He's wrong. Yeah, no, he's. Oh, oh, I did a whole episode a few months ago. Which, by the way, if you're well, you're all go welcome to go Please back, back and, and uh, take a look at. I I might do an in depth episode on that because I yeah. know a lot about geography. And I could explain you know. to people why for and I did for 40 minutes why it's going to fail in Vegas. It's gonna be funny yeah. it, for really to watch it burn from a distance. And so yeah. inside the stadium, this is Let's what it looked that. like here. There are some <laughs> people that went in, the announced crowd was just over thirteen thousand, which for an opening day crowd is a fucking embarrassment. It's because really that embarrassing. stadium holds a lot more than yeah. thirteen thousand. The Coliseum capacity, I know it's been adjusted up and down throughout the years. But it's called the Coliseum. <laughs> yeah, it's got football seating. It used to be, I think it, I think it's close to 60K if you open up those center field seats. So, like, yeah. they only had, like, a one-quarter capacity, if that. This is hilarious. I, I just can't get it's over dead. 
I can't get over how hardcore these fans are to do this level of protest. So I, I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. I really, really hope that this uh, this owner gets kicked in the nuts soon. I, <laughs> everyone I, in league wide hates him. We've seen more fans at like the Somerset Patriots games than, than this. This is an abomination. We performed for more people at open mics than, than this. This is terrible. This is terrible. No, it's good. It's trash. And so if anybody from Oakland happens to run across this, uh, my heart goes out to you. I really hope yeah. you guys win all these legal disputes or whatever's going on in Oakland because it is, you know, we can't fathom that here in New York because we're in the biggest city, whatever. But this is, it's trash. And something that is a part of your life is being ripped away from you unfairly. Yeah. Because everyone, it's, and the thing, I, I, I don't want to cut you off, but there's one more thing. Yeah. A lot of people from throughout the league who maybe don't, haven't been following this story for two mm -hmm. decades like I have, they have this idea that like, oh, no, the, the fans just don't show up for the, to the games and the, the city is lazy, whatever. Dude, I'm telling true. you, yeah. that that fan base is freaking hardcore. They're rabid. I've been inside yeah. that Coliseum. They, it, it's, it's not that they don't want to show up. It's that they haven't been given a reason to show up. Uh, the, because their payroll has been the lowest in the league for I don't know how long. And yeah. it is just it, – it's such a con job. I, the, I, I, I don't have words to, to – it upsets oh, me as a, even a non-fan of the team that they have to deal with this. So sorry to cut you up. What were you saying, Mike? No, it's embarrassing because you remember those are also Oakland Raider fans. And we know how good a fan – how crazy fans Oakland Raider fans are. So, mm -hmm. like, you know – this talk has always been, oh, Oakland's a dump. It's a dump. San Francisco's nice, but Oakland's. I was listening to the, the JR Sports Brief on uh, one day on WFAN. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have our own issues with 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 uh, poverty and things like you know. You get off at Madison Square Garden, there's people sleeping on the ground in front of Madison Square Garden. Any big city is going to have that kind of problem. So Oakland yeah. is no different. I mean, I'm sure they have their own types of problems. I've never been there, so I can't speak on it firsthand. But you, mm -hmm. it's just – it comes down to racism, honestly, of saying, oh, well, it's bad, oh, it's bad. And like, come on, what are you really saying? Well, and you get the – That's not like, fair. Yeah, no, no, you're 100% right about that, yeah. actually. And and not to like I'll, – I'll, 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 okay, I got to fucking bring a little bit of politics into this. But like, bring it in. Once in a while, <laughs> you'll see somebody who doesn't know what they're talking about commenting on like a Oakland Coliseum or the A's relocation-related yeah. post. And they'll be like, ah, yeah. oh, if that city wouldn't have gone woke – Right, you know, right, 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 right. shithole. All the cities that are run by Democrats are shitholes. And it's like, well, first of all, every city is run by Democrats. If you, if you do anything about population density and voting patterns, which I right. do, and people right. comment it's, shit don't, um, it, they, you try to, they try to make it political. Like, yeah, if we could just, like, you know, get a bunch of Republicans to run it, we could, like – get the best stadium ever and it's like dude shut the fuck up you it's know, not gonna it's change so either way and so dumb and so fucking ignorant to say stuff like that uh no, anyway I... this episode is definitely gonna get knocked down in the algorithm because of the amount of f-bombs i've been dropping but uh <laughs> oh, that's it, right you can't curse on the internet anymore that's right. yeah really yeah the, yeah the, the one reason to use the internet because it's not done by 1980s tv standards they're taken away from us uh all right anything you want to cover before we uh rock it out of here mike no, um, the, uh, Jalen Brunson is still going off. The Knicks are still alive and fighting. I mean, um, I'm so excited about the baseball season that I forgot the Knicks are also yeah, killing it. The Knicks are still killing like this. They were supposed to be dead and gone, according to the experts. And they just talk about stepping it's up. It's happening. And, the just shaming, like I said yeah. it was going to happen. They're going to slowly stepping. start getting people back from injury, and they're going to start heating up. Stepping as up. Yeah. Why don't more people watch us? It's almost like I know what I'm talking about. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we kind of know. I mean, you, you probably know a little more than me. Um, in not terms about of that. No. Uh, not, numbers uh, and stuff, yeah. I just – I go by gut instinct, which is – regulates oh. me as WFAN caller intelligence. But I think I'm right. <laughs> See, uh, I, I'd like to think of myself as the WFAN overnight substitute host intelligence. I'm like one notch above the caller. But, yeah, uh, just one <laughs> – <laughs> yeah no I, i'm um i don't know is i i couldn't do like x's and o's in basketball i go more by by vibes a lot and also yeah. by stats of like who's putting up points who's got more rebounds and assists whatever yeah. and i gotta say the knicks have some guys who are ranked highly in some of them categories and the whole team it's a complete team yeah. and they are good and it's gonna be fun uh um, yeah. i don't think they're gonna win a championship but i mean it, 
I'm not ready to put money on it, but they can make a conference final. They, they, they can, can go to they, the they could take the Celtics final. or another team to seven in a conference final. Absolutely. Well, look, is it possible for them to win a championship? Absolutely. Anybody can win. Sure. I mean, look yeah. at look at look at uh, the Heat last year when they just got hot and they were they barely made it into the playoffs. But you know, I, this Knicks team is just full of surprises, which is exciting. Yes, yeah. the Knicks have been garbage for so long. Um and a completely unwatchable com- had people you didn't even want to root for. Oh a sh- yeah, a shitty head coach and Isaiah Thomas and he's just a slime ball, sexual harasser and all this stuff. But anyway, uh, the Knicks look good. Have you followed any of this March Madness stuff? I'm so I gotta be honest year. with you, I haven't. I have been so busy with uh life uh stuff. I I Honestly, tell man, you who's good and who's not. I have no and it's an embarrassment. I'm embarrassed to say that. And the reason why is because I grew up about a 30 minute drive from Storrs, Connecticut. Yeah. So and, and look, that is culture up there. Because in Connecticut, where I'm from, doesn't oh, have UConn, any, like, and, yeah. pro sports. We, you're either Yankees right. or Red Sox. And uh, unless Whalers. for some reason you're a WNBA fan, they're and well the Whalers got taken away from us. Right, that's all okay. they ever really had. Which is one yeah. of the reasons why I'm so into the A story, not to bring it back there, because like we went through that as a state, yeah. like our only pro team, and right now the A is the only pro team in Oakland got taken away from us, like right, right, right and so it's it's, um, yeah. So UConn is a big deal up that way. It is a yeah. big deal. Uh, it is, Okafor. Yeah, most men, men's remember. and women's, by the way, yeah. they are yeah. a big deal. And yeah, so the oh, fact yeah. that I barely follow it anymore. It's a uh, it's Gino Oriema. And people yeah. would, yeah, people would disown me if they knew that I did give a shit. No, uh, I before. let last year working at Barstool, I worked on the Mark Titus show and they introduced his show during March Madness. And I had to work the overnight because they couldn't record until after the games were over. So when I would edit, I was editing a lot of March Madness stuff overnight. And like I learned everything about college basketball and, and, I'm so sick of it. It's just because of the late nights, really, and just all the work. Not that I don't like college basketball or I don't like the tournament, but I went through the gauntlet last year putting that show out. We had to promote it, and it was so much. So this year I'm kind of glad to take a little bit of time off. Yeah, you're kind of glad they didn't hire you again this year. You're like, no. It was so much work. Yeah, I do like college sports, though. I'll tell you, as I've gotten older, I've gotten more and more into college football, and we're going to do – Yeah. At some point, again, I keep saying, oh, I want to do an episode about this. I'm really busy with real life and other projects I'm working on in terms of like my, like, because I, I do cartography in the side. I, I have a daytime job. I have a yeah. relationship you know with all this shit going on. Columbus. Um, it, it's, I do want to do a breakdown of how fucking stupid the people are that broke, that broke up the Pac-12. And to show you, this sure. is how much the teams yeah. had to travel before. And now they're going to have to send kids who are 18 years old all the way across the country because their new conference is like two time zones away. It's yeah, it's real dumb. It's all it's money. real dumb. It is all money, but it, it, it's it's dumb. Anyway, um, yeah, I just I hate the powers that be. I hate the Oakland ownership. I hate the Pac-12 people. It's all money. This episode, I hate the I hate Jose Altuve and the Astros and all their stupid fans. This is just an episode full of hate, Mike. Where I'm it's just like, it well, all out. We're we're from the comedy world, and in the comedy world, yeah, you root. For the little guy, you pull the rug out from under the big person, the the rich yeah. people that you know. So that's kind of in our nature, you know. Uh, not that hey, making money is awesome, you know. But like we come from, you know, look at Charlie Chaplin. He would always kick the cop in the ass and steal food. You know, today the people look at that and go criminals. I'm like, but that's what Charlie Chaplin always did, you know. So we got, we come from that world, so we're rooting for the little guy, even though the I Yankees are not the little guy. I love the reference you just threw in there. So, uh, Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> there we go. Mike's going to go watch some black and white silent films, and I am going to let him hold up some video games right now. Uh, they hold people, up. I almost fell. <laughs> See it has been fun. It has always been fun. Uh, until next time, everybody. Peace out. <laughs>